I have equal parts pride, shame, regret. There's a lot in there. It's something that not everyone gets the opportunity to do, to serve for your country or to be called a veteran. And what comes with it is immense pride. Immense pride. I'm, I'm very proud to be a veteran. Proud. Absolutely proud. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd do it again. When I joined at 17 into the Armour Reserve, there was still World War I veterans alive. How are you? I was able to follow in their footsteps, a different era, a different generation, but the score is still the same. I got in the mail a, a cutout of, in the newspaper for the ADF Gap Year program, and it was, I think it was one of the first years that they had opened up this program. I didn't know anything about it, I don't remember hearing anything about it at school, um, but I thought, why not? I didn't want to serve in a world war or anything like that. I just, and I just was looking for adventure and that seemed a good way to do it. And at the same time, learn some skills and at the same time, sort of end up being a certain type of, uh, of person. I was looking at it as a police officer, but I couldn't swim. I couldn't do the bronze medallion. So that was struck off the list, but it always came back to the army. I was up at Rockhampton and I think I had about five dollars left to my name. I go, ooh, I think I better go home. That was it, hitched back, got back all the way and joined the army. I was in Afghanistan and I was there for quite a long time, six months. You don't really have time to think sometimes too deeply about what effect it will have on you later in life or how you'll be when you're there. Um, and it's not what you expect. It's not, there's nothing you can do to prepare yourself for somewhere like that. See, I can, I'm, I've got a couple, well, I've got a couple of mates who aren't with us anymore, personal friends through veteran suicide. It just got too much for them, so I just remember them. I wish they hadn't have, wish, wish they hadn't have taken their lives. Yep, because it's just a waste, it really is. But they're not with us anymore, so, yeah. My mental health was terrible my last year or two uh, in the Navy, it was just terrible. and. Uh, I can't really say better than that. It was, it was a very bad time for me. It was very difficult. And when I finally decided to, to get out, it was like a desperate act. It was the last gasp of a drowning man that uh, it, uh, you know, it gave me a new life and a new career. And, uh, yeah. Though the nightmares have gone, it's still raw. But, um, yeah, as they say, we soldier on, shouldn't have to, but you can't dwell on it or otherwise you'll be in the bottomless pit for the rest of your life. Yeah. Don't bottle it up, just talk. Talk to your GP, talk to your, talk to your wife, talk to your spouse, talk to your mum, your dad, your sisters. That's the biggest thing, It's just talk. Yep. Because if, if you don't talk, you're doing yourself a bit biggest misjustice. Be kind that if you're not having a good day, then that's okay. It's okay. If you're having a good day, that's awesome. But if you, you, know, you can't get out of bed that day, don't beat yourself up about it. The journey's hard. There's no doubt about that. But when you can, reach out. It took me two years after living here to actually set foot into the Veteran Centre, um, where as soon as I walked in, Wayne Cubitt was the president. And the first thing he said to me, he said, how you going, brother? It was just an ease, just the calmness, and um, yeah, just, just reach out. No one's gonna push him away.